as we move into this experiment, not just with Netflix, but Disney Plus, do you think that the streaming platforms are going to find it more lucrative to sell ads? Does the subscription model eventually go away? I don't know that subscription model eventually goes away entirely. I think there's always some set of people who are willing to pay more money, which usually means a higher margin. And you kind of just see those high-end products persist for a long time. Uh, you know, they're aspirational in some ways, but they are also high margin, especially for streaming services. I think what you're seeing the street react to is Netflix finally has plans for revenue growth that aren't just, we're going to spend more money on content, right? And the two big plans here are ads, and that is two levers of revenue. You get actual subscription growth because you have a lower price. People might sign up at a higher rate. And you've got the ad money. That has yet to be proven out. They're, they're forecasting smaller ad loads, just like four ads an hour, much smaller than anybody else. And then on the other side, they're going to start cracking down on password sharing, which they're being very open about. So there's actual plans here, and you mm. can feel about those plans however you want. There's actual plans to both grow the subscriber base and revenue that aren't just spending money on content. We haven't seen that from Netflix in, what, five years? Okay, so then what about the price? We just were looking at a graphic that compares it to the other streaming platforms, and it is on the higher side. Yeah, I, Netflix has held itself out as the must-have for years. If you look at remotes for TVs, there's always a Netflix button on them. Netflix pays for those placements. The TV manufacturers know that if they ship a button, if they ship a remote without a Netflix button, consumers will be mad. That is an amazing position for Netflix to have been in. But if you look at the must-watch TV shows, they're not necessarily a Netflix mm -hmm. anymore. So I think Netflix has to still keep that content flywheel going fast while it faces incredible competition streaming from not uh, just Disney, but also Apple from Peacock, all these other competitors that have a lot of experience making must-watch shows. I'm glad you raised that, uh, Neelay. I'm looking at a Bernstein note where they argue uh, the ARPU target, you don't need to have a $65 uh, CPM. It's totally doable in their, in their view. And actually, the real debate should be whether or not uh, going to this uh, new model uh, adds up, ends up adding subgrowth. Maybe time to focus on subgrowth again. Yeah, I think that is the entire story here. If you can kind of just get back to uh, subscriber growth at a reasonable ARPU, and that's, you know, I think we're going to see all of these streaming services fall into kind of the trap that cell carriers fall into, where ARPU is the entire name of the game, right? You bring people in, and then how much money can you extract from them? Netflix has to bring more people in, right? They have done basically expansion by going into every country around the world, and they've allowed uh, countries like the United States, other developed markets, to kind of stagnate. They've got to bring more people in in these markets with new product offerings, which they just have not done for a long time. Yeah, Neil, that's what I wonder is, is this emerging new model from Netflix a sign of maturity, which would be bad for the multiple? I mean, you think about uh, subscriber, are they really going to grow subscribers at seven bucks? Like, if you're going to drop streaming, are you just going to drop down to seven bucks to watch some ads? How significant is that going to be uh, for growth? And then, yeah, the ads are really worth more in developed markets than in developing markets. Can they afford to keep pumping out localized content, which is really expensive on a sort of per country basis when they're also pursuing this? I don't know. Yeah, you know, I always think about Netflix as making a lot of shows that are great to watch while you look at your phone. And, you know, that's kind of been the Netflix binge model. Like, you just turn it on for several hours, you look at your phone, the show happens to you. Um, I'm, I, I'm interested to see if they can create those must-watch shows. They've got a few of them. You know, the data suggests that every turn, uh, net, every week, Netflix has the top, some of the top 10 shows in the country. They're going to add Nielsen measurements to the ad-supported tier because advertisers want that independent, audible data. We're going to find out if that's true, and I think that will reveal much more about the future of Netflix.